Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in today's one I decided to put together the cheapest new parts PC that is possible. Um, should you build something similar to this? No. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, th there's no two ways about this. Uh, this is a PC build that you should most probably avoid, but I wanted to see just how bad combining all of the cheapest new parts could be. Now, I used eBuyer here in the UK to gather all my parts. Depending on the retailer of your choice, parts may differ in price, and you might find that the cheapest processor, for example, could be a totally different model. At eBuyer, the cheapest processor, well, was the processor that you're about to see, but on other sites, in other places, in other countries, in fact, different parts may be priced differently. So if you were to take part in the same build challenge it's not really a challenge but uh, you you might end up with something a little different but let's get straight into the parts and I'll discuss what I've put together these are all brand new parts I've done something like this in the past but I cheated a little bit because I got a power supply from a car boot sale but let's get into it and uh, show you the atrocity that is the cheapest new parts PC that is currently possible to put together so let's start with the case. I actually really like this case. It's cheap, very plain, and has no regard for anyone wanting to take advantage of front-mounted intake fans. But it does come with a 120mm rear fan, which although quite audible, is a very nice gesture. The clear side panel is also a bonus, though as I'm sure you can guess, it is plastic and not glass. I like this case more than my Cooler Master Q300L, simply for the fact it costs half as much and has a PSU shroud at the bottom, if that's what it's called. Speaking of which, the power supply is a Colink Core 300 watt unit. It's 80 plus certified and I've used a couple of these in the past with no issues. It even has a 6 pin graphics card connector. Where we're going though, we don't need a 6 pin GPU connector, but it is a nice inclusion. The 4 plus 4 pin CPU cable is also pretty long, which may not seem like a big deal, but there are plenty of cheap PSUs out there with annoyingly short cables. I'd also like to mention storage now before things go rapidly downhill. This is an integral 120 gigabyte V series SSD. If everything else about this PC is terribly sluggish, then at the very least we should strive for snappy boot times. All right, here's where things get a bit rough. The CPU and motherboard, yes, you heard that right, is known as the Biostar A68N2100. This combines an ITX board with an integrated or soldered processor, namely the AMD E1 2150. It has two cores, two threads, and a 1.05 gigahertz clock speed. Best of all, <laughs> if you can say that, it has an 8 watt TDP, so it uses next to no power. But with no power comes no performance. Okay, so for Linux, maybe Windows 7, this CPU would be fine or better. A lightweight OS in combination with this might fare a little better than it would with Windows 10, but I use Windows 10 because I assume that's what most people would opt for, and as you'll soon see, that was a bad move. The cheapest separate CPU and motherboard combo would definitely be an AM4 board and some sort of AMD APU, probably an A6 9500. But the rules here were to use the cheapest parts, no exceptions. Add to this slowly souring concoction a single stick of 2GB DDR3 memory, and we're almost done. This was the cheapest in stock at the time, but I've since discovered that you can get the 1333MHz RAM for about £1 cheaper. Right then, now for the cherry on the cake, a cake that has long been spoilt and should be thrown away. This is the Radeon HD 6450. It's been around since 2011 and surprisingly you can still buy it brand new. It may be bad, and in fact it was probably among the worst cards even back then, but there's no denying its popularity. A lot of businesses buy these in bulk to upgrade old office machines and for basic usage, something to act as a display adapter, they are fine. What makes this card a little worse than other 6450s though is that it's the DDR3 version and not the faster GDDR5 variant. That being said, it was actually the processor that held our system back today. So 
add these parts together and what we have here is the cheapest PC money can build. So before we get into uh, what a little there is of the testing, let me just talk about something that I touched on earlier and that is the AMD A690 500. Now this is probably AMD's cheapest CPU or APU that you can still buy new and that is what I would suggest buying if you want to purchase the absolute cheapest processor that you can in order to build the absolute cheapest PC that you can. Either that or the Athlon 3000G which really isn't too much more. That way you get yourself on a very nice platform with plenty of room to upgrade. You can purchase a cheap motherboard, a cheap AM4 board that is, and then upgrade at some point down the line if you don't have the money to build something too capable right now. But those AMD APUs are pretty good. Even the basic A6 one is okay. We've tested it before. It can run some games. It's perfect for basic usage and it will outperform this by a mile. The onboard GPU on both that and the uh, 3000G is probably better than the 6450 as well. But you know, I set out to build the cheapest PC here, no exceptions, and this is unfortunately what we ended up with. But prices may differ depending on what websites that you use. I would also recommend a lightweight operating system if you do end up with these specs, Linux or even Android. We've installed Android on an old laptop before and it's surprising how well that works on older or slower hardware. So these are all things to consider. But I suppose we must now talk about the performance of this machine in particular. Now the AMD soldered chip here I think is one that you can find in laptops. My grandparents used to have a laptop with an E1200 inside and that was slow from the day that we purchased it for them. So yeah that wasn't the best purchase decision but that was before I knew what a processor even did. Now this one uh, for basic usage this CPU this whole PC in fact for basic usage isn't brilliant. Um, <laughs> You want to browse the internet, this will happen. You want to so much as click the start menu, this will happen. Uh, you, you glance in the general direction of the computer itself and guess what? This will happen. <laughs> um, uh, when it comes to video playback, YouTube, or maybe even just watching a video that you've uploaded from your own iPhone, for example, there will be frame skips. It will be a pretty laggy experience. And I then went ahead and made the mistake of trying to run Cinebench R20. I began the test at about 9.30 a.m. And by 10.30, well, it was about halfway through. So we never did finish that test. But let me assure you that no good CPU will ever take an hour to complete a test or half of it. That might be a, a brief exaggeration. But yeah, it was pretty slow. So we never finished the test. And I didn't dare try and run the single threaded result because my goodness I would actually have a full beard by then. Now when it comes to gaming I mentioned this before but the 6450 is actually being held back by the CPU so I am tempted to retest that in another video we have looked at it before but maybe I'll make a terrible tech awards video on it or something like that it is of course the DDR3 version. I tested a couple of games Minecraft being the first this is as far as we got. Yep um, and then I jumped into CSGO, a bot match, because I didn't want to disturb my teammates or upset the uh, the gameplay because me running at five or six frames per second wouldn't have helped the final result of the match. So yeah, I just jumped straight into a bot match so as not to disturb anyone. And uh, even so, performance was pretty bad, but this was again to be expected. Now normally at this point I say, well, it's not very good at gaming, but it's okay for basic usage. Now normally at this point I might... What's happening? What? Okay, so this is another problem, obviously. Uh, that just happens. Uh, <laughs> apparently that happens, which is new. So, okay, so forgive the unprofessionalness and shakiness of this shot, but I just had to add this bit into the video because a thought occurred um, and I decided to upgrade the RAM to maximum to 16 gigs just to see if there was any difference in everyday performance. And I'm happy to report that things were a little snappier. However, it was still very laggy. 
games still did not run <laughs> very well, if at all. We still had the same result with both Minecraft and CSGO. Maybe we got one or two more frames in CSGO, but the CPU is just too weak to be honest but yeah even with 16 gigs of ram it did mean that we were able to experience smooth video playback just for a brief 10 minutes i quickly installed windows 7 as well i didn't really film much of that because as i was expecting the experience will again be a smooth one but it is an unsupported operating system now but even windows 10 with a little bit more ram would probably do this thing a huge favour when it comes to those standard everyday tasks. But anything more, and the CPU is still far too weak. It doesn't matter how much memory you have. But thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. I'm going to put the uh, camera down now because my arm is aching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.